Hey all of Trinity and today I want to share with you guys my do's and don'ts of freshman year so you guys can rock out your first year of college. Let's get into it. My first do for you guys would be it to move in early. I got to move in early my freshman year and it was super amazing. You get like kind of like a one up on your alternative self if you didn't do that. <laughs> you get to learn the campus, you get to meet some people hopefully that are already moving in early as well. I think we was able to do like this like first year program where like a whole bunch of freshmen moved in early and we did like activities together and stuff which is pretty fun. But I also have a friend who he just moved in early and he just got to walk around campus and get to know everything a lot quicker than the rest of us would I think if you didn't move in early. Do not work first semester if able. I know every situation is different but if you do not need to work I would say don't work <laughs> your first year. You miss out on so many events just opportunities whenever you're working um opportunities i mean like just meeting people and hanging out with friends they might be you know going grabbing lunch together you might have to like you know go to work which is definitely a common thing i think as you get older but if you are able to your first year to not work i definitely suggest you guys not do that take in the full experience of freshman year go to the events that your um, university is hosting for you guys, go hang out with your friends, go to like day trips and explore downtown or anything like that. And you know, don't have that worry of working. I would definitely suggest you guys to have a support group. College is... is a challenge, <laughs> is a struggle. <laughs> College throws a lot of things at you, and if you do not have that support system, it can be really hard to bounce back or handle those challenges. So I'd highly suggest you find a support group or just a support system, whether that's family, some friends, like a therapy group or a therapist, anything like that. I would just highly, highly suggest you guys having a support group for when things get rough and tough, because they do, okay? It's like I've been saying, it's a lot, it's a huge transition, and I don't think anyone should be expected to take it on by themselves. I think please, please, please do not buy your books before your professor says you need them or you literally see on the syllabus and assignment that you need that book for because trust me, you can literally waste hundreds of dollars trying to buy stuff in advance and then you might get in the classroom and they're like, oh, that's just a syllabus our whole department uses. We don't actually use that book. Huh? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I even know that I had an English class first semester it was a book, I had a book, it was like $20, it was nothing. I used it twice, and then my two friends ended up having that same class next semester. They literally ended up going like almost half on a book, and then they would swap, like they would hand the book off to each other whenever the other one was going to class, and that ended up working out for them. So, you know, books are expensive, save yourself some money if you can. <laughs> Please, please, please utilize your office hours. Office hours are a great way for you to get to know your professor. They get to know you beyond just like being a student. They get to know you as a human. Because I definitely think it's really important for you guys to know that you guys are people first. You guys are humans first. You guys are not students first. You guys are humans first. So little side rant. Please take care of yourself this school year. Please do what you need to do to take care of yourself. A lot of self-care, a lot of self-love. You guys are humans first. Being a student can come after, I promise, okay? Okay, back to the actual point though. <laughs> they can be the ones to be your references or write your letters of recommendation. You guys are going into either, whether that be grad school or the workforce. So, but I would not go into college with high expectations just simply because college is never what you think it's gonna be. Not saying that it's necessarily gonna be better or worse, it just never, is what you predict it to be. It's, you know, obviously something that you have never experienced before. Everyone hypes it up. You see people's perception of college and movies, which is definitely not accurate. I mean, look at High School Musical. I mean, I was expecting to see some like encores during lunch periods, no. So I just say like, limit your expectations. Come in with just an open mind and see what happens. Just has to let your college story unfold and see what happens in the pages. One thing you should definitely, definitely do for sure is get involved, whether that be you go to every event your college hosts. I know like my university hosts some amazing, amazing events and my college even hosts some amazing events as well. They have like some food trucks coming out soon. Very excited for that. But just get involved, whether that be with events that the school has going on or if you have um, like a club that you're really interested in, or start your own club, do that too. Club organization, go out to the games, things like that. Just don't be a person that literally goes to class 
and then goes in their room and doesn't do anything. Cause then I'm sure you're gonna have a bad college experience. Cause I wouldn't, I don't know. It's just like, why would you pay <laughs> all that money to just go to class and then go back to your room? There's so much more that the university has to offer, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> so utilize all that you can. Like I said, you already paid for it. So, you know, get your money's worth. And my last don't. Please, 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 please do not get locked out of your room. It is very, very irritating. <laughs> I don't, I think I only got locked out once or twice, I think. And I've been here for, I've been in college for two years thus far. So please don't do it. But I had a roommate freshman year who locked herself out. I kid you not like five times in one semester. Just please don't do it. It's irritating for you, I assume, because you know, you're not, in your room, you're not able to get in your room. It's irritating for desk assistants, for residential advisors. It is just irritating for the roommate if you are always asking them to let you in. It's very, very irritating. Don't do that. Hold on to your key. Find some system to hold on to your key. The same way you hold on to your phone and you know where your phone is at all times, in your pocket, on your hip. Figure out some system. Work it out, okay? Just help everybody involved and hold on to your access card, your keys, whatever you need to get in and out of whatever building you need to be in. Please just handle your business. Handle your business. <laughs> I know my university actually, they start finding people after you get locked out a certain amount of time. So if you are someone who is very forgetful and you feel like that might be you, might wanna look into that. Those are all the do's and notes that I have for you guys today. If I miss any, feel free to put it down in the comment section below. If you guys like the video, feel free to give it a like. If you guys are liking me, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.